Oh boy. Guys, I've replaced my Pro Controllers. You see this? You doggo. Nobody cares about you anymore. You have so many issues. There's drifting. There's a whole bunch of nonsense. To be completely honest, I've been looking for a replacement for Switch Joy-Cons for a long time. Third-party options aplenty. But the problem with third-party options for Joy-Cons is that you always seem to give up something significant when you buy them. You know, you get the, the, the Joypad Pros or whatever. They don't work wirelessly. You know, those are like the hoary Joypad Pros. They don't work wirelessly. You lose rumble. Uh, and you lose some key feature sets of things like this in the, for the sake of comfortability, I guess. Plus, it gets really bulky. And I don't want bulky Joy-Cons, but I also don't want to give up features. And one feature you usually give up if you want everything, especially in portable mode, is rumble. And I, I don't want to give that up. You also give up wireless connectivity. Uh, this, these, these Joy-Cons are hard to replace. And that's despite the fact that there's drift and everything else. You know, this doggo design is fine and everything, but it's not quite perfect from Nintendo. Uh, not, not very ergonomic. And again, Joy-Con drift is real. And spending 80 bucks to replace a pair of Joy-Cons or just, you know, 40 bucks or so to get one Joy-Con to replace the left one, which drifts most often, is a bit of a hassle. So I've been looking for replacements for a while. You know, you spend 80 bucks on these, you know, I have another set here. It's just, why? Why am I wasting money on Nintendo accessories that aren't working? So in my quest to find a replacement, I discovered this. So this is the Etch Power Joypad for the Nintendo Switch, and it says Switch Lite as well. Although, uh, I'm gonna tell you guys, don't really buy these if you're looking to use them on the light. Then again, if you have a light, you don't really replace the Joy-Cons anyways. You get drift, you better be willing to take that bad boy apart and replace the stick yourself. But uh, these are what I discovered, and there's some key things about these. Uh, as you can see right here, uh, they come with the uh, the M logo design uh, to replace the Doggo uh, for your, your wireless connectivity controller. Uh, things but what's interesting is that you get pretty much everything you could ever want uh, in joy cons you do get rumble although it's not HD rumble it's traditional rumble but I gotta be honest with you guys when is HD rumble outside of like mattered outside of one two switch just being honest it's a really cool tech that isn't being used I think this is gonna end up being like the haptic feedback tech of the PlayStation 5 DualSense controller where some games are going to use it at the start and it's going to seem really cool but then as the gen goes on like it's just going to be like normal and normal trigger rumble uh, that we see even in the Xbox so uh, it's got rumble which is a feature I actually enjoy since most games don't take advantage of HD rumble they just use it like traditional rumble so you get rumble you get wireless connectivity as you can see here player one player two uh, you get full-sized control sticks which are actually better than the Joy-Con sticks. They are actually traditional control sticks, which means, uh, yeah, you don't have that rumble issue, right? Uh, or I'm sorry, you don't have the Joy-Con drift issue, right? The drift issue is avoided because these are traditional controller stick designs. Uh, you get your A, B, X, Y buttons, which, yeah, they're a bit squarish compared to the round, but honestly, when you're hitting them, you don't really notice the travel's about the same. You get your plus and your minus. You get your capture button. You get your home button. Uh, and then you get some additional buttons as well. Um, you know, you have your quick quick menu access, access button, but you also have uh, turbo buttons. Now, I don't, I'm not going to be using the turbo, so while there is turbo buttons included with this, I've never been a turbo button user. I didn't buy this controller because of turbo. You want to experiment with turbo, that's fine. I'm experimenting with these as true Joy-Con replacements. Uh, you have everything you could have. The one feature you are giving up is a feature you probably don't even realize. Well, two features, really. One, you do not have the camera. So there is an IR camera on the bottom of this. Again, if you're not playing 1-2 Switch, you don't really need it. And uh, based on the sales of 1-2 Switch, you guys aren't playing 1-2 Switch. And two, the other feature you give up is uh, a feature that I never even bothered to use, and that is NFC technology. So on here, you could tap your Amiibo on uh, and use them in Smash Bros and stuff like that. You can't do that with this. But even when I play Smash, I don't do that. So. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm not giving up anything that I don't want. And these are only 40 bucks, half the cost of traditional Joy-Cons for what I think is a more ergonomic design. Now, when you unbox this bad boy uh, and you open it up, you will have this thing sitting on the inside like this. You take that out. Uh, and then when you lift up this plastic, underneath there will be 
a, a power cord which is not in here in fact i don't know what i did with it it's a usb c uh charging cable that you can plug into the back of either one of these controllers uh, and then a user manual now this user menu will explain how turbo works uh, and all that jazz. The thing is, uh, you can connect these to the rails of your Switch. They will connect to the they will connect to the Switch the same way uh, normal Joy-Con do as well. They will also charge off the Switch. They have a 300 milliamp hour battery, although it says 400 milliamp hour. I didn't bother to open it up to see which is correct. Whether the ad on Amazon for 300 milliamp hours is correct, which is exactly what the these Joy Cons use, or if the 400 milliamp hour in the in the pamphlet is correct, doesn't really matter because they get plenty of battery life I get almost you know 8 to 12 hours worth of battery life which is about what I get on a standard Joy-Con uh, but let's go in and show you uh, that the controller works that there isn't drift all that jazz uh, so let's just get into this um, right now so I'm gonna start moving the joystick here you see it move on screen uh, we're gonna go down to uh, controllers and then uh, we're going to uh, sorry that's not what we want to look at right we don't look at controllers we're going to go to system settings here. Um, controllers and sensors. Uh, controller vibration on. Uh, and then we're going to calibrate the control sticks. Oh, it has motion control as well. I forgot to mention that. Um, so we press down on the left stick. And you'll see there is no drift. It is just sitting here without any drift. As I move it around, you see you got full range of motion. No issues, no dead zones. Uh, that's kind of a common issue with third-party controllers, dead zones. Nothing there. All right, so let's back out. Let's press down the right one. And you'll see again, there's no dead zones. It snaps back like it should. Go around. Everything works as it should, as a control stick should. All right, so we're going to back out. Now we're going to calibrate the motion controls. Uh, so we're going to calibrate the controllers. Uh, we're going to uh, start with the left one. So I'm going to press the minus button. we got to hold it down here. Uh, place the control on a flat, stable surface with the stick facing upward. So we're going to set it down. The calibration's been complete. All right, so so it has motion controls. I uh, will show that off in a game here. So let's uh, let's go find uh, something that that takes advantage of motion controls, like say Splatoon 2. All right, so we load up Splatoon 2. All right, so I don't have the motion controls on right now. I just wanted to show you guys that the control stick here. And uh, the running around works just fine as between. So let's let's go to the menu here. Let's uh, turn on motion controls. Um, now I don't actually use motion controls in Splatoon. I'm not a big motion control fan, but uh, we're going to do that anyways. Uh, motion control uh, is turned off, so let's turn it on. All right, let's back out. And you're going to see that the motion controls work like they should. There's no um, missing controls. That the, the gyro sensors work just as well. As your regular Joy-Con is going to run around, you can shoot, 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 all that jazz. Now, I am not a motion control user, so I'm going to go actually turn that off. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go get into a match. So one thing we talk about here, as I'm going to go get into a match, is how the triggers and everything feel. Now, they are a little bit loose feeling, um, and so it makes it feel cheap. You can tell that it's made out of cheaper materials, but since we don't have... Um, you know the, the the sort of pressure sensitive triggers on this. It's all digital just like on here uh, It ends up not mattering that much and I'm gonna go into a mattress platoon just to just to get kind of a, a play test here for you guys uh, In in TV mode here because it's really hard to show off handheld mode But we'll we'll try our best here to to, to give you a look at handheld mode in, in a bit All right, so as you can see here I'm I'm just spraying some ink around having some fun. It honestly feels great I like the new the the, the different ergonomic design of this controller um, everything's working as it should. Uh, the buttons are, 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 are having a nice contextual feel to them. Um, I'm not very good at Splatoon, but um, a nice contextual feel. I really like everything about this controller. Now, one thing we do at the test is the D-pad, because oftentimes on these third-party controllers, the D-pad can feel a little mushy or sometimes be uh, not responsive. So we'll check out some Mario 35 here uh, after this match is done, uh, just, just to give her a look-see. And uh, see what we're doing. Now, I can feel uh, the rumble action happening every time I get into the, the ink, and it feels nice. It's a nice contextual feel uh, with the uh, the pressure on the ink. So it's a Mario 35 action, and we'll we'll test out the D-pad here. Now, the D-pad uh, does kind of have a, a concave in the middle feel to it, uh, but we'll see how uh, how responsive it is here 
Um, so we're going up and down. Up and down feels fine. But we, we, we to really tell, you got to get into some gameplay. So uh, let's see here. Let's let's select the the one one course and try out Mario 35 matches here and see how this feels. Um, it's got kind of a, a little bit of a sharp edge, but it, they do have rounded corners. So it doesn't feel too bad, but let's let's see what it's like when we actually play. Uh, and you'll see me using the D-pad and, and playing Mario 35 as we try to get a win. And uh, we'll see uh, if there's any sort of issues uh, going up and down, left and right, or if it like pushes opposite directions when you're pushing on the sticks or on, on the D-pad area. You guys know what I'm talking about. All right, so let's uh, go here. I'm trying to remember uh, which one's jump and which one's the... Yeah, okay. So it feels fine. I don't really feel any issues with that D-pad. Obviously not the most comprehensive of tests, uh, but I'm I'm pretty satisfied there. I'm like I'm liking how it feels. So I guess the last thing to really talk about is how does this bad boy feel in handheld mode? Well, let's find out. All right. So as you can see in handheld mode, this is kind of the ergonomic design I was talking about on the back here. Um, you can see kind of both of the concaves. You see where the USB-C controllers plug in, um, and uh, honestly, it feels really great in handheld. Uh, the only flaw in these controllers I see is that when the system isn't on and the controller is disconnected from the system, you cannot turn it on. It does not turn the system on. See how it's like trying to connect, but it doesn't. Uh, and then when the system is on, oftentimes I can't get the controller to do anything. See how the light's not moving? But if I slide it on the side like this, suddenly I am connected. Uh, so it has a hard time wirelessly connecting if it's not already attached to it first. Now when you take it off, when you take them off, it will connect like normal. So uh, it's kind of weird that it works that way. But I got to be honest, um, it's not really not that big of a deal to me. I usually leave my Joy-Cons on the side anyways until I want to take them off. And you just got to turn the system on first. So not a big deal to me. Uh, just a little bit of handheld experience. Uh, works great. Just, just being completely honest here. Ugh. So what's my grand takeaway? Well, my grand takeaway is the old original Joy-Cons, I'm just gonna throw them in the trash. Like, I'm literally done with them. Uh, these have completely replaced, and there's different color sets you can get of these. Uh, I just got the neon uh, blue and red version because uh, that's just what Amazon had in stock at the time and I didn't wanna have to wait. Uh, but there are other color variations of these. Again, the brand name here is uh, the Etch Power Joypad for Nintendo Switch slash Lite. And uh, yeah, honestly, um, outside of the minor quip, you need to slide them onto the side of the switch in order for them to be recognized by the by the actual switch uh, before you take them off. That's really the only flaw I see. And for 40 bucks, I'll take that over Joy-Con Drift any day. I gotta be completely frank here. Uh, yeah, these are better than Joy-Cons for 40 bucks. I can't suggest them um, enough. I know this looks a little weird, but it feels great in the hand. Uh, the controllers feel great in the hand, whether it's in handheld or uh, in TV mode, or I guess if you wanted to try out tabletop mode, you could do the same thing, but it's going to be the same experience as in TV mode. Man, oh man, these are some fantastic controllers for only 40 bucks. I'm going to put an Amazon affiliate link down in the description so you can pick them up for yourself. If you're having issues with Joy-Con drift, you're looking for new Joy-Cons, or you want more ergonomic Joy-Cons, uh, I know there's a lot of third-party options out there, and I have tried a ton, but these are the best and you give up the least you have all of the core functionality you really want minus an ir camera and regular rumble instead of hd rumble it doesn't really make that big a difference nintendo doesn't use hd rumble pretty much outside of one two switch oh and nfc functionality which again when's the last time you tapped an amiibo on your controller and it's not like your old joy cons are, are, are gone you can still plug them back in if you really need that that functionality but damn damn da, 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 damn uh, also with this, you won't need something like a satisfy grip because it puts your hand in a more natural feeling position because of the way these are designed. And honestly, that's not that much worse than, uh, than the normal joy cons. It's really minimalistic. I like it. All right, folks. So be sure to check this out. Be sure to enter our giveaways. We are giving away, uh, a Nintendo switch, a PlayStation five and an Xbox series X. Also two copies of Pikmin three deluxe Go down in the description to find out how to enter that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nathan Rebel Jazz from Nintendo prime. This is the etch power. Uh, Joy-Con replacements. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. See these? Garbage. See this? That's what you want to get now. Only $40. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I gotta get back to play some Switch, so I'll catch you guys in the next video.